we need to find better ways to power and heat our homes, businesses, industry and transport. But as alternatives are being sought and developed, we are unfortunately overlooking some amazing opportunities to transition our energy production that are already available to us. One of those is geothermal energy. We are currently not tapping into this fully renewable and clean resource, largely due to a lack of information available to the general public, but also primarily due to a lack of supportive policy on governmental levels. Geothermal energy first is a source of renewable energy. It's a energy in the form of heat beneath the surface of the earth. You go to the underground and you can find this heat in form of rock, in form of water, or in form of steam. We know that from many years, maybe you know Jules Verne, his book about the center of the earth, we know that in the underground you have a lot of fantastic heating. Two concepts. The first concept is between 0 to 600, 800 meters deep. Here the temperature is constant. Fantastic for heating and cooling, not depending on weather conditions, you have the heating all over here at the same temperature. Second concept, deeper after 800 meters to 5 kilometers, more you drill deeper, hotter is the source. So you can have temperature until 200 degrees, more than 200 degrees, and here you can also produce electricity. And we have the potential to heat all the planet with our source of energy to make it fossil free but we have a lack of awareness. And the lack of information is also because everything is underground, so it's not visible. You don't have visual impact, but you also don't have information to promote this technology. Nature has provided us with some natural, inexhaustible batteries to tap into. And of course, we also have the Earth itself, which provides us with geothermal energy. However, Unlike other renewable energy sources, geothermal energy is available 24 hours a day. And from just one section of the Earth's crust, geothermal technologies can extract enough energy to power all of humanity for hundreds of thousands of years. Thanks to some technological development, we are now able to develop projects all over Europe. Anywhere in Europe you can develop geothermal energy. And, and this, thanks to this technological development, we are able you know, to provide heating, cooling and electricity. Research and development is very important for the geothermal sector because the geothermal is facing uh, great opportunities and greater opportunities compared with the past, with the recent past, because of mainly new exploitation technologies going to develop and accordingly new uh, plant arrangements which are potentially going to be built in the near future. Technology and innovation have been leading principle of Exergy since its foundation around 10 years ago. And they are a key point of the company even today. We developed a new technology which brought a much higher competitiveness into the organic ranking cycle system market, allowing us to build a portfolio of 500 megawatt of geothermal installations worldwide. Another great chance that geothermal has today is the involvement of the oil and gas companies. Uh, which is something that uh, we are experiencing strongly in the last, uh, in the last month. Uh, all the major oil and gas companies are seriously looking into geothermal. We developed uh, a new turbine arrangement, which is uh, radial outflow, a very effective uh, and very robust design. We have been able to cover a very wide range of temperatures and Exergy is able to offer today state-of-the-art uh, turbines up to 20 megawatt. Binary technology accounts for around one-third of the total installed geothermal capacity. But if we look at the last 10 years, around two-thirds are binary. This is because binary technology allows no water consumption and fuller injection of the resource with no emission. One example fitting very well is the plant that we deployed in the Azores Island. The plant is a good example of the importance that geothermal can have in the energy industry in Europe and provides uh, with 5 megawatt around one third of the total load of the island. The stronger drivers uh, of the energy transition that we are seeing in these days uh, are a big opportunity for geothermal. The chance is to deploy geothermal plants uh, in areas which usually were not uh, eligible for it and develop uh, new exploitation technology and power plant technologies. 
So EGEC is the European Geothermal Association. We are representing all the geothermal market actors, all entities, public but also private, active in the geothermal market. The geothermal energy has a fantastic potential. It's already competitive. It's already affordable for the citizen and for the industry. We are able to provide more than 25% of the heating and cooling consumption in Europe. We are able to provide more than 10% of the electricity demand in Europe. We are a key enabler for the energy transition because we are not only a source of energy, we are a source of local economic development. We can really build a local economy around geothermal because we produce heating, cooling, electricity. We are also able you know, to extract some minerals like lithium from the brine. So we can really also help to decarbonize the transport sectors with electrical vehicles, with batteries, lithium coming from geothermal. So we are really a source which is a key enabler for the energy transition. In some countries, geothermal energy is relatively new technology. So there are some general misconceptions about it by the general public. One of them is that geothermal energy is similar like oil and gas exploration, where the energy source is depleted with time. And because geothermal energy has great potential for renewing the energy for the built environment, these kinds of projects need to be developed in close vicinity of the built environment. So we see a lot of not in my backyard responses from the public. We are Huisman, uh, we specialize in heavy construction uh, equipment for the energy market. And we are also operational in the energy transition. Uh, we operate Huisman Geo, we operate our own drilling rigs and uh, provide full services for uh, geothermal projects, uh, up to drilling the well, but also designing the well, engineering and uh, the complete care of the total project. Well, drilling for geothermal works pretty similar to what we know in the oil and gas industry, so the drilling process itself. But with geothermal energy, what you do is you drill two wells. One well in this direction where you harvest hot water, can be steam or hot water, and at the top it's cooled down and the cold water is pumped back into the other well. So there the water propagates from one well to the other and warms up again. So it's basically sort of a cycle. There are various challenges with geothermal drilling and exploitation, which we address by technological innovation. To give a few examples, first for the construction phase, um, there we look at the whole process and we try to identify those steps in the process that consume the most time and which are the most risky. And we see if we can solve this by new technologies. And one tool that we developed is a casing wall drilling tool and you see with casing while drilling, you skip the whole process of tripping in and out a drill string after you reach target depth. Also for the exploitation, we take a look at the full life cycle of a geothermal project. One of the challenges that we have identified is well corrosion and scaling. To tackle those issues, Huisman developed Huisman Composite Tubulars, which is a fully composite downhill tubular system for well construction purposes. And by shifting from steel to composite, uh, you don't suffer from corrosion, you have much less scaling and on top of that also much less pump losses. Local policies and legislation between member states vary a lot. And the procedure for moving around equipment and personnel is not as efficient as one might think. So the European government can help grow the sector by simplifying these policies. From the underground, what we know today is that it's mainly developed for oil and gas. These people are working for many, many years. They have a lot of lessons learned. They have a lot of technical development. But we know today that with the clean energy transition we are living, that we have to leave fossil fuels. And many opportunities exist to transfer this knowledge, to transfer these technologies to geothermal energy. But what we have to understand is that today, one barrel of hot water from geothermal is not equivalent to one barrel of oil and gas. So what we have to understand is that in this transition, we need to change also the mentality, we need to change the business model. So it's not only a transfer of technology, it's a transfer of, 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 of spirit to be fully involved in the energy transition. And we are already seeing that. Turboden is an Italian company. We are leaders of the organic ranking cycle technology and a pioneer of this since 40 years. The RC converts the heat into electricity and our first geothermal power plant was delivered to Zambia in 1988. Geothermal energy is, uh, is, is unique and, uh, and very site-specific. 
So such flexibility is possible thanks to the different working fluids we employ. So anytime we select the best one according to the different sources. The larger it is the capacity, the better it is for the economy of scale and the efficiency of a project. And we are now implementing a very large project, uh, which is the 29 megawatt Palayan project for EDC in the Philippines. Binary technology is the most trending in the geothermal industry. In fact, it has doubled the shares in the last five years, simply because it can transform energy that will be not accessible by other technologies such as uh, traditional flash steam turbines. I see a trend also for higher temperature projects uh, because binary has no limits in terms of uh, temperature for, for the resource and the higher the temperature, the higher the efficiency. And also considering uh, 5 gigawatt of uh, single flash plants already installed in the world, the brine recovery projects such as the one I mentioned before uh, in the Philippines can expand the current capacity with no need of new wells. Turboden currently holds the Vice Presidency of EGE. In Brussels, we promote policy for the exploitation of geothermal sources in Europe, the role of geothermal industry, manufacture of technology and the supply chain in EU market. And last but not least, promoting the European excellence in geothermal outside Europe, focusing in fast-growing and developing countries. So if large oil and gas companies will believe into geothermal and convert their assets into geothermal drilling, there will be definitely a brighter future for geothermal energy among the other renewable energies. For traditional geothermal systems, you need a hydrothermal aquifer. That is what's being targeted. And uh, that is already a great system, a great solution. Um, but it's only available at 5 to 10% of the Earth's mass on the surface. The Everloop system is a system without the requirement of a subsurface aquifer. Um, it is a subsurface drilled radiator where we go down from the surface with two independent well bores to our target formation. We drill them with long horizontals to have many pipes to mine the heat into the system and connect them at the toes so we can get the heat from the subsurface into our system which is completely sealed um, and in the end of the day circulate cold fluid in, get hot working fluid out. The working fluid is fresh water so it's environmental friendly and uh, produce electricity, heat or even cooling on the surface as it is needed. And the big um, difference from conventional geothermal systems is that we can almost develop it everywhere. We just need a stable target formation in a drillable depth, but no hydrothermal aquifer. The biggest advantage of the closed loop system is that it can provide baseload energy where it's needed and at the same time be, um, it brings the opportunity to be highly scaled up. Technically, baseload energy simply means that you have a certain amount of energy available 24-7 every day of the year. Um, for our life, it means that we have the luxury to access energy, heat, cooling or power when we need it. So we don't have to plan our lives around the availability of energy. We take this for granted. And uh, that's why geothermal plays such a high role. It's the only renewable, sustainable energy source that provides baseload energy 24-7, um, independent from seasons, independent from weather, independent from which time of the day it is, and even independent from any catastrophic event at the surface because the system is at the subsurface. Geothermal energy is a source of renewable energy it's already affordable. So why, in the energy sector, we are not supporting technologies which are renewable, but also affordable for the citizen and for the industry? We need to stop to protect fossil fuel markets. We are seeing today the conditions with all the political discussion on energy. We have everything in Europe with geothermal energy and other sources of renewable energy, to heating, to cooling, to produce electricity to all citizens and to all industry. What we need is fair conditions.